Welcome to this demonstration on high flow nasal oxygenation and clinical applications. The high flow nasal oxygenation therapy is an oxygen supply system capable of delivering up to 100% of humidified and heated oxygen with a flow rate up to 120 liters per minute. First, let's see the components of this machine. Air and oxygen tubes will be connected to the pipeline sources with a pressure of 4 bars. Additionally, when moving patients to the ICU or recovery room, you can connect them to cylinders using this connector. This is the oxygen and air blender, which allows you to provide oxygen concentrations ranging from 21% up to 100%. Next is the flow meter, capable of delivering up to 120 liters per minute. For BiPAP mask ventilation, a flow rate between 80 to 120 liters per minute is utilized. When it comes to high flow nasal oxygen therapy, the recommended flow rate for children is provided in the table displayed on the screen. While for adults, it is advisable to maintain a flow rate within the range of 50 to 80 liters per minute. This is the oxygen sensor responsible for reading the oxygen concentration delivered to the patient. It must be calibrated by exposing it to room air before use. Once the reading reaches 21%, you can reinsert it. The heater humidifier device has three buttons. The mode button allows you to choose between high and low modes of circuit heating. Currently, it is in the low temperature mode, delivering 34 to 35 degrees Celsius. In the high temperature mode, it can deliver up to 40 to 41 degrees Celsius. The function button allows you to choose between three temperature readings to be displayed on the screen. A stands for airway temperature, C shows chamber temperature, and H displays heating plate temperature. You can lock the screen by pressing the function button for three seconds. To unlock the screen, do the same by pressing for three seconds. Now let's talk about the mute button. It is used to silence alarms. The alarm menu is located on the left side of the device. For example, if the temperature cable gets disconnected, it will trigger an alarm, and the red LED indicator will display the alarm message. You can silence the alarm by pressing the mute button, and then address the fault. Now, let's move on to the consumables and the setup of the breathing circuit for patient use. There are two different sets, the pediatric circuit and the adult circuit, and also varying sizes of nasal cannulas, small, medium, and large. After selecting the appropriate circuit size and cannula, follow these steps to assemble the circuit for patient use. First, slide the humidification chamber onto the heater plate and remove the white caps. Next, spike sterile water into the chamber. Please remember to use only sterile water for this purpose. The chamber will automatically fill up to 150 milliliters. Connect the gas delivery limb between the flow meter and the chamber. Attach the 1.8 meter long breathing tube to the chamber, and the other end of the tube will be connected to the nasal cannula. Position two temperature sensors, one on the chamber output, and the second on the patient end connector to monitor airway temperature. Finally, plug in the heater wire on the chamber's side connection of the long breathing tube. This wire runs along the interior of the tubing, effectively heating the humidified gas to compensate for heat loss along the tubing length and prevent condensation. Now connect the nasal cannula to the filter and then to the breathing tube. Some nasal cannulas allow fixing the tube on either side, so simply insert the tubing into the side that is comfortable. Close the open end with the white cap provided along with the cannula. Connect the oxygen tubing to the pipeline supply. The machine will sound an alarm, which will stop once you connect the tubing to the air pipeline supply. Now connect the power supply and switch on the machine. Now let's talk about the clinical applications. High flow nasal oxygenation has many indications and can be used in the following conditions. Accident and emergency cases, respiratory failure, rapid sequence intubation, etc. Preoperative indications, 
For example, OSA, bariatrics, difficult intubation preparation, awake tracheal intubation. Intraoperative indications. Upper airway surgeries, sedation outside the operating room. Postoperative indications. Post-difficult intubation, OSA operative, difficult extubation scenario. Intensive care indications. COVID-19 patients, pre-ventilation, post-ventilation, respiratory failure, etc. High flow nasal oxygenation has several limitations. For example, it is contraindicated in cases of recent nasal surgery, nasal obstruction, epistaxis, complete airway obstruction, fracture of the base of the skull, diathermy, and laser surgery of the upper airway. And now coming to complications. Airway fires can occur during laser or diathermy applications in surgical procedures. Stomach inflation may result from improper use of the device. Pneumothorax or airway complications can arise if it is connected directly to an endotracheal tube. Hypothermia and airway dryness can occur if the heater and humidified chamber are not used properly.